Good morning. My name is Shisleen, and today, along with my group, Ravni, Manisha, Nancy, and Akash Deep, we'll be discussing two case studies under corporate and contract law. Uh, we'll be discussing and elaborate the two case studies following the IRAC method. We'll also be discussing uh, in detail the IRAC method. In our first case study, it's about SOO Burgers, a burger company operating in New Zealand and Australia. And while they wanted to promote their company and increase in their sales, they, they advertised a fair dim sum beach, where under any individual who collects 50 wrappers will be entitled to a golden ticket, where one could have the chance to win a car. After reading this offer and advertisement, uh, Mickey and Brad, Brett happened to collect the 50 wrappers and reach the counter to redeem their tickets. In doing so, we are going to be further discussing are Brett and Mickey entitled to the price legally? Has SOO Burgers been under a contract to uh, redeem their prices? To discuss this further, I'll hand it over to Nancy and she'll be explaining the rule in this case. Thanks, Tasleem. Hello everyone, my name is Nancy Verma and my student ID is MI3073. Uh, the next point which I am going to discuss is the rule that is R in the IRIC method. There are some rules. First is there are three essential elements that are legally enforceable to make a contract that is agreement, consideration and intention to create a legal relationship. The second rule is to make a valid agreement there must be a valid offer by one party and the acceptance by the other party. The next is an offer can be expressed or implied. An unqualified acceptance to the offer leads to the formation of legally enforceable contract. The next uh, rule is there must be a need of valid consideration and communication between the parties. Promisory estoppel binds the promiser to perform their obligation, therefore SOO Burgers is required to fulfill their obligation towards Mickey and Brett. The next is the application to this case study where SOO Burgers provide an offer to the increase their sales. The second is the form, the terms required in the offer were that Mickey and Brett were need to collect 50 wrappers to redeem their golden ticket which they did. SOO Burgers revoked their offer publicly. The next is the application of principle of promissory estoppel stops SOO burgers to step down from their offer. On the other hand, the SOO burgers to their benefit said that they did not set any fixed time duration for the acceptance and the last is the offer is not indefinite. Thanks. Now my friend Ravni is going to conclude this case study. Thank you, Nancy. My name is Rabneet Kaur. Okay. My student ID is DMA3571. Now I discuss about the confusion of part 1, cooperation, corporate law. Nike and Belt have fulfilled their parts in the acceptance by collecting the wrappers as OO burgers uh, liable to pay the golden uh, winner of golden tickets as OO burger could have revoked their offer through proper notification. They didn't. Hence, they are hence they are liable for the hence they are liable to give the golden ticket to Mickey and Beverly. This is uh, this is the part this is the end of the part one. Now I discuss about the part two that is the corporate contract law. Uh, Sparker Private Limited is a company based in the Tasmania. They hired uh, Sara as the managing director on eighth of August. The, they, uh, her contract was valid two years and had to renew it after that. Her appointment was loaded with a uh, to ASIC and uh, once her contract expired, she confirmed to, uh, once her contract expired, she continued to, uh, her, to perform her duties on the 20th of December. Uh, she entered into a transaction with a bank which the bond is, was not aware of the it. On the beam, they notified the company stop all aware of the it. On the beam, they notified the company stop all the transaction of the payment and the bank was 
uh, sued to the company about this and should Spark and company uh, should Spark and company are liable to pay back. Thank you. Now my friend Manisha will discuss about the rules. Thank you, Ravi. Myself, Manisha, and my ID is APS three six zero nine. As Ravi told you about the issues of case study uh, in contract law. Now I'm going to present the rules of the Sparking Private Limited Company. The first rule is directors of corporations being entitled trusted with the guardian duties. The second rule under Section one hundred eighty of Corporation Act two thousand one. Lay the civil responsibility on directors to exercise diligence and care. The next rule that is, directors needs to ensure that they use their powers for good pay and best interest of the company. The last rule that is written here under the section one hundred eighty two bars the directors and the members of the corporation for acting for their own personal interest and gain, which can be detrimental for the company. these are the rules that are implemented for the for the uh, case study now my friend akash deep sharma is going to present the application and the conclusion of the part b case study thank you very much thank you manisha my name is akash deep sharma my student id id is mcc3039 uh, now i'm going to discuss the applications of this case study the board of director at sparkling did not review Uh, with the Sa Sala's appointment and thereby accepting her uh, services, the board of directors fail at exercising their due uh, diligence. Uh, Sala continued with uh, with her duties in, uh, despite her contract had expired, and did not inform the board of directors uh, for her decision uh, to undertake a loan. Uh, Sala used for uh, for her position uh, improperly. She can she carried out the uh, transactions uh, in a uh, in in ill interest and acted against the goods of the uh, company. Uh, now my friend Justine is going to discuss the conclusion of this uh, case study. To discuss the conclusion of the case study, uh, we are going to be putting forward our viewpoints. The general outcome of this case will be that the bank will need to be paid the loan principal loan amount along with the interest. That has been to be uh, accumulated over a period of time. Uh, Sarah should be held personally liable by the company for acting against the company. Uh, the transaction that she, uh, the, the transaction that she went ahead with the bank was not uh, made aware. The board of directors was not made aware of this transaction by Sarah. Uh, hence, the company can sue Sarah for her act. Uh, under section 182 she misused her position in a in an improper way thereby disadvantaging the company uh, to to better manage the company's affairs the company should have put a limit on the transactions that any individual can process that way the company could have been uh, monitoring her acts and it won't have to pay for the misdoings thank you we hereby conclude our assignment thank you